Hi, everybody. My name is Joey Fight from thephysicaleducator.com. And today I would like to share with you an awesome net and wall game called Movementon. Now, Movementon is a game that was designed to help students better understand how to create and attack open space in net and wall game situations. That said, you should know that this game was actually designed for virtual physical education. So here's how Movementon works. You have two courts, the red court and the blue court, and each court is made up of 25 squares. The courts are divided by a net, which is the white line in between. Now, being a virtual game, this isn't an actual real playing area. Instead, this court exists as a slide within a Google Slides document. Now, two players will meet online and will each be given a player icon, the blue and red players that you see here. There's also a ball icon, and then each player is allotted 20 move points and 20 strike points. Okay, so once both players have joined in on the game here and decided who's going to be playing red, who's going to be playing blue, we are ready to play some movement in. So the goal of movement in is to defeat your opponent by being the first player to score five points. A point is scored when a player either fails to move to the ball or successfully send the ball back over the net, which is the white line here in the middle. So here's how we have a rally in movement in. At the start of the rally, each player begins in the center square of their court, which is the C3 square in each court. So the red player is starting in the center here, blue player is starting in the center over here. Players play rock, paper, scissors, or they can rally for serve if they prefer, to decide who begins the game with the service. Players then alternate who serves for uh, each rally after the first rally. The player serving the ball decides which square in their opponent's court they wish to send it to. They then move the ball to that square by dragging it over one square at a time and only using up, down, or back and forth movements. So you can only go up or down like this or back and forth, but you cannot move diagonally across. Each square the ball moves into costs one strike point for the offensive player. Once the ball has been moved to the desired square, the offensive player then subtracts the total amount of strike points it costs to move it there from their strike points total. So let's look at what this looks like in action. We have the red player here ready to serve. They want to send the ball way up over there into E5. So to get there, they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And they've sent the ball there. So now they subtract 9 strike points from their strike point total. The player receiving the ball must move their player icon to the square where the ball has been sent. And again, moving one square at a time, only using up, down, or back and forth movements. Each square they cross costs one move point for the defensive player. Once they have arrived at the square, they subtract the total amount of move points their move cost from the remaining move points total. So if blue is going to defend this service here from red, they're going to move one, two, three, four squares to get there. And then they remove four from their move points total. So they're down to 16. This keeps going on with the player sending the ball back and forth until one player no longer has enough strike points to send the ball over the net and into their opponent's court. Or if a player no longer has enough move points to be able to move to where the ball was sent uh, by their opponent. When this happens, a point is scored by the opponent. So let's continue this rally here to see what I mean. So right now, blue has the ball, and they're going to send the ball to the front of red's court. So they're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And that costs them five strike points. Red now must defend, so they're going to move one, two, three, four. Now remember, red only has 11 remaining strike points, so they have to be smart here. So they're probably going to move it one, two, three, four, five over. So they're down to six strike points now. Oops, and I forgot to... Remove their move points. Blue has to move there, so they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So they've got 8 move points left. And then they're going to send it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So they're down to 10 strike points. Red has to now move to that square. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So they're down to 8 move points but they only have six strike points left. So they're very limited into where they can send the ball. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
They now have no more strike points. Blue is going to move one over, dropping their move points down to seven. And then they can send the ball one, two, three, four. Over here. Now, does red have enough uh, points to move? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can get to the ball, but they no longer have any strike points left. They can't get the ball over the, the net, which means that blue has scored the point for that rally. After each rally, both players move back to their center square. The ball goes to the player whose turn it is now to serve. So now it's blues because red had it first. And the move points and strike points all get reset to their original totals. Play goes on like this until a player has scored five points by uh, defeating their opponent five times in a rally, in which case the game is won, and uh, the players get to celebrate the play that they just had. Now, just so you know, in each slide here, there is all the rules that are, are shared in the speaker's notes. Uh, you can set it up like that. And if I were to set this up for a class, what I would do is I'd actu I would actually have all of my students playing on the same document. So I would hit Command C, V, and just duplicate this slide. And then I would send my students out into breakout rooms. So if I was doing five breakout rooms, I would set five slides. The number of your breakout room would be the game that you're playing. So if I was in breakout room three, my opponent and I would play on slide three. This way here, everybody's operating on the same document. The teacher can be supervising all of the games at once, and you can be jumping back and forth between the breakout rooms to talk to the players about their tactical decision-making and how their game is going. Now, Movementon is obviously a very different-looking net and wall game, and it's a game that was designed to really isolate that tactic of how do we create space, how do we attack space, how do we set up an attack in a net and wall game situation. The idea here is that we can continue to help our students develop their tactical understandings of games despite being in a virtual physical education setting. This will help us once we get back to face-to-face -to -face and begin to introduce skills and help students develop their skill level to provide students with a better understanding of what they're trying to achieve with these skills so that they can gain that tactical advantage over their opponents in game situations. So that's movement in a net and wall game designed for virtual PE that was put together to help your students continue to develop their tactical understanding while not at school. If you'd like to learn more about this game, see some of the modifications that you can bring to it, access the assessment tools that I designed for it, or just share your experience playing it with your students, please check out the game page which I've linked in the description below. Once again, my name is Joey Fight from thephysicaleducator.com. Thanks so much for watching and happy teaching.